I thought App Harbor would make a fantastic five minute wonder because it's amazing how much you can get out of this thing really, really quickly. You get hosting, add-ons like SQL Server databases, source control, continuous build and release, and you get the whole thing for free. I'm signed into the App Harbor website already. I'm just going to jump over to my applications and we'll see a couple here already, but I want to create a new one and I'm going to call this five min membership and I'm going to publish the project I did for the last five minute wonder, which is the ASP.NET membership provider. We get a bit of info here about how we can use Git to get the project into App Harbor, which we're going to come back to, but I want to start with the add-ons. And in particular, I want to go down to the SQL Server add-on. And I want this entry-level database with a fantastic entry-level price. And I'm going to add one of these guys. 20 meg is heaps for what we're going to do. Great. So new add-on has been created. Let's go down and have a look at that SQL Server. So what we're going to see here is a great big connection string. And I'm going to copy this guy. Now again, we're going to use a membership provider here, so I'm just going to jump straight into the Visual Studio command prompt, and I'm going to regenerate the tables behind that provider. So this is the same sort of process as I went through last time, but I'm going to do it via command line. I want to create all the tables, not only for membership provider, but role provider, profile provider, etc., which this switch will do. And then I'm going to use a C switch, which will use a connection string. So that's going to run off to App Harbor and create all that for me automatically. I'm now going to go back over to Visual Studio where we left off last time and we had an application services connection string and this was using my local data source. I'm going to create a config transform for release and I'm just going to use the one that's here already and uncomment what's in there, application services, and I'm going to put in the connection string that App Harbor just gave us. And that should be everything we need to do with the app. Let's head back on over to App Harbor. And I want to go back now and have a look at those Git instructions. And in particular, everything we need to do for a new application. So let's open up our Git bash. And the first thing I'm going to do is just jump over to my project, which I keep in C, projects, 5 min membership. And we'll just follow the instructions. So we will initialize that repository. We will add everything in the repository. And then we will commit everything into our local repository. Add a new project for App Harbor. Great. Now I'm going to cheat just a little bit and copy this next git command to save me retyping everything. Now we can see over here, I've just clicked on the wrong window, but our membership provider has now been created. All of that has been done just fine. Let's jump back to git. Paste in that command. And now let's push it up to App Harbor. And of course we're pushing the master up. So that's going to take all the files after we authenticate and push them from my local machine up to App Harbor. As soon as it gets to App Harbor, we can see 42 files have just gone. App Harbor is going to build them and it's going to automatically release them. Now, as we can see over here, we need to refresh the page after we've followed the steps, which we can now do. And here's what we see. We have under our builds one build which has succeeded. We can drill down and see the build details, including the execution and uh, hopefully the success of any unit test. But what I really want to look at is this temporary application URL that we've been given. Normally we'd bind domains, but this gets us in here very quickly. Let's try and go to the login and then register page and see that we can actually create an account because if we can do this, it will validate that the database has been set up correctly. So let's create that and here we go, a success screen. So that's it. I've taken an existing ASP.NET application with a SQL Server backend, created a brand new App Harbor project, put in the database, migrated the web app and everything just works.